For folks who are not familiar with uh, Congresswoman Kirkpatrick, uh, you actually have one of the largest congressional districts in the country. Uh, in fact, it's the largest representing the Native American population. Yes, it is. And what I find unique with you is the fact you're actually born, raised, and worked your way up in the state of Arizona. Yes. Which makes you uniquely qualified. Yes. Think. So I was born and raised on the White Mountain Apache Nation up in the White Mountains, and my dad's family ran the general store there, and my mother was a teacher. At her family were Republican ranchers in that area. My dad's family were Democrat <laughs> business people. And, uh, you know, I, I tell that because it's so much a part of who I am and that ability to, you know, debate issues, but at the end of the day, find that common ground to get things done. Uh, and that's what I've done both in the State House and also in Congress. And, and I like finding that, that common ground to, so we can actu actually make progress for Arizona. Okay, and, and, and that brings up a very good point. Um, what led you to run for Senate this time around? Well, a lot had to do with the size of my district. So, you know, it goes from the Utah border down to Cochise County. I have seven offices and then a couple traveling offices. You know, one that comes down here in the Verde Valley as well. And, and talking with people, listening to people and their concerns, it was clear to me that they wanted a real choice in who they elected as senator this year. Uh, you know, talking with a lot of working families who really value education, but they're struggling to put their children through school. A lot of veterans who've already served our, our country, but they still can't get the benefits they've earned, especially in the rural and the tribal areas. So it's just been a variety of folks, you know, seniors who still wonder if they're going to get their Social Security and Medicare. That's a big issue here in the Verde Valley. Okay, very good. And I understand that, in fact, you, uh, you were on the uh, Veteran Committee. Yes. Okay. So you I was the first member to actually call for an investigation when the allegations broke in Phoenix. Okay. And then I've really introduced legislation over and over to protect the whistleblowers because they were very brave and courageous in coming forward. And if they don't have that kind of protection, you know, we won't always know what's going on. Okay. Thank you. And of course, in representing rural Arizona, um, you mentioned some of the issues that are important to them. And uh, what do you see are some ways to boost the uh, economic development in these rural regions? Yeah, that's a really good question because I grew up in a timber community and it was thriving when I was a kid. And then that industry collapsed and that area just plunged into poverty. So it's been my work and my vision for Arizona to build a strong, diverse, stable economy. And that's why I'm on the Agriculture Committee and Transportation and Infrastructure. And we're doing some work here in the Verde Valley on those issues. Uh, regarding transportation, we've been pushing the expansion of Highway 260. A uh, little concerned about some of the delays there, but also really fighting to keep the original roundabouts because those have an economic impact in the, in the area. Uh, helped a lot of our wineries in, this, in the Verde Valley apply for grants. Uh, through the Agriculture Committee. So we really want to see our small businesses thrive. Okay, very good. And Congresswoman Kirkpatrick, uh, one of the questions from our staff had to do with uh, natural resources. Uh, one was, how do you feel about the Sedona National Monument proposal? Yeah, I support that and, pr and putting that into protection. Uh, it's been difficult to get a consensus in that community about how to do that. Uh, but we continue to have those conversations and, and work with folks there. But also brings up another really important natural resource issue, and that's the Verde Valley River. So the Verde River, I mean. Um, you know, 75% of Arizona's biodiversity is around the Verde. Uh, it's, so, it's such an important part of Arizona, and working to protect that water source. Okay, good. And another question uh, relating to natural resources. Do you believe the Glen Canyon Dam should be put out of commission and the Colorado River allowed to flow again to provide uh, water downstream? Boy, that's a tough question because the Colorado River is the most endangered river in the country. And of course, we re rely on it here in Arizona for water and for energy. I recently visited the dam uh, and looked at those generators. And there's a real concern that if the water level drops to a certain level, it, the generators aren't going to work. And how do we replace that electricity? So we're not there yet. Uh, we really need to focus on alternative energy, especially in Arizona. We should be a global leader in solar, but we need, we're not there yet, Tom. We need to get that done before we talk about shutting down other energy sources. Okay. 
And getting to the actual race, um, if you had to pick the three biggest differences between you and the incumbent, Senator McCain, what three differences would those be, Congresswoman Kirkpatrick? Well, I've consistently put Arizona first. Uh, and I think that has a lot to do with my deep Arizona roots here and, and my vision for the state and really being connected with Arizonans. I think that's the top one. Uh, you know, I'm still fighting for jobs. And, you know, our jobs numbers came out this week, and we're still losing jobs. And so uh, I think that's a big distinction. I talk about Arizona first and jobs and building up our economy. That's what I'm here for. The second thing I, is, is we've got to have comprehensive immigration reform that includes the DREAM Act. So John McCain has been a little bit all over the, the board on that. Uh, when it's an election year, you know, you know he come, becomes a very sort of strong border security, anti-immigration guy, and then you know changes his positions. I've been consistent about fighting for comprehensive immigration reform with the DREAM Act. It's one of the reasons I ran for Congress in the first place. I got frustrated in the state legislature that we were trying to do patchwork legislation. It has to be a federal, a federal uh, solution. It has to be. You know, and then I think the third thing is uh, opposition to the uranium mining at the Grand Canyon. That's a big one for us. You know, I'm, I'm opposed to uranium mining in the Grand Canyon. John McCain supports it. So there's a real contrast. And uh, I've supported legislation that will make a permanent ban of uranium mining, and he supports just the opposite. So I think those are the top three. Okay, and in fact, when we had him in our office, we talked a bit about um, the, the mining in the, uh, the Apache country in the uh, Oak Flats area. Now, I want to give you an opportunity to present your case as to why you voted in favor of mining in that area. Yeah, you know, there have been many versions of that land exchange legislation, and I wanted to be at the table uh, with Congressman Gosar uh, when we talked about that, because I wanted the environmental compliance pieces to be in place. So that legislation started out waiving all environmental compliance, not having the pre-exchange environmental studies, post-exchange environmental studies, and the government-to-government -government consultation with the tribe. So I worked very hard uh, with the tribe, with the environmental groups, with the communities over there to make sure that their current concerns were addressed. Uh, and it ended up being a very good piece of legislation. And um, right now, with the convention going on, Congresswoman Kirkpatrick, would you, sort, would you support whichever nominee makes it out of this process? Well, I, I'm a Hillary supporter, and I said that early last year. And so, um, you know, I haven't had much time to watch the convention. I'm actually every day out in Arizona meeting more voters and talking with people about their concerns. I don't have much time to sit in front of the TV, but I hear there have been some good speeches. Okay, and um, probably the final one is uh, being in a rural area that you are in, uh, obviously you have a wide diversity of representation as far as your constituency. Um, having been raised in Arizona with a lot of rural background, um, my understanding is you, you are in favor of the Second Amendment as far as firearms ownership. Yes, okay. yes. Um, and my understanding is also that um, you, were, you were also in support of trying to get health care uh, you're a supporter of the uh, Affordable Care Act. Yes. Okay. And, and what's concerning to some of my readers is the fact that, of course, both Blue Cross, Blue Shield, HealthNet, and uh, as well as United Healthcare and Humana mentioned they're going to pull out of Arizona. Um, and yeah. And relate this to the Affordable Care Act. Um, what would you say to the folks that are kind of counting on this legislation? Yeah, it's a, you know it's a real concern. I will tell you that that I hear from folks every week who say they finally have health care. I mean, I, you know, I remember being at a, at a wedding over in the Prescott Valley area a couple of years ago and the father of the bride came up to me and said, you know, he said, Ann, you know, I'm a Republican. I voted against you because of that vote, uh, but I was wrong. Thank you. I wouldn't be here walking my daughter down the aisle were it not for having the Affordable Care Act. So a lot of people have, have benefited from it. It's not perfect. Uh, and it's been six years since it was passed into law. We should be working to solve those problems. But I'm very concerned, especially in the rural areas, about ha people having adequate choice. So I wrote a letter to the secretary and the administration saying, please give us a plan about how we make sure we've got enough carriers in rural areas and in Arizona in general. So we're keeping an eye on that. But some good news for your people down here. 
Northern Arizona Healthcare just opened a uh, unit here in Camp Verde. So I'm one of the previous, I used to be the, one of their attorneys when I had my law practice in Flagstaff. So I was happy to see that they're coming to Camp Verde. Yeah, and my understanding is uh, you're actually the, uh, the first woman deputy county attorney in Coconino County yes. history. So that's yes. quite an accomplishment, I think. And also was the uh, city attorney for Sedona for a while. That's right, the city, yeah. so that's for 10 years it says here. Um, one last question. Uh, of course, our readership um, it generally affects folks in Clarkdale, Jerome, Camp Verde, Cottonwood, Rimrock, Lake Montezuma, and Village of Oak Creek. Um, if you kind of wanted to leave those voters with what you're all about, um, what, would, what message would you relate to the folks locally here? You know, want to be there for them. Uh, we want to solve problems. One of the things we've been working on is the flooding issues here in the Verde, uh, working with those communities. And so that's why I have, you know, my, my staff come down here, listen to folks. I mean, that's really the most important part of our representation. Uh, but also making sure that our communities thrive and have, you know, a good, excellent education system so that we can raise, uh, you know, raise and, and train those workers for the 21st century jobs that we're going to bring to Arizona. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks Patrick. for this Pleasure opportunity. Really, thank you, Vito. I appreciate yeah. the opportunity. Have you seen any poll numbers on how, you, how the race is going? There's a lot of polling. There is a lot of polling out there. Uh, the race is neck and neck and has been since yeah. the first of the year. Yeah, even John McCann's saying that, it yeah. seems like. So, you know, uh, last poll that came out, I was ahead of him by a couple percentage points. But look, I always say the real poll is the election when people actually cast their ballots. And so that, that's what we're focused on. Do you think he's in trouble in the primary? I think he is, from what I hear from people. Yeah. I think we're seeing that, and, and some polling in that primary shows that race neck and neck as well. Now, you've noted in your ads that he's supporting Donald Trump. Yes. Do you think that's wise? Uh, he, look, you know... <laughs> That's a big issue for a lot of people in Arizona, and especially the Latino community. You know, building a, a wall on the border is not good for Arizona's business and economy, and that's one of t Donald Trump's top priorities. But deporting 11 million people, you know, that's personal for a lot of Arizonans. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.